All right, um, so hi, and welcome to Comms V Next, and thanks for coming. Um, hopefully, you guys have already gotten a lot of good information today. I know everybody's probably eaten, just got done eating, and so your brains are still kind of uh, digesting all that sugar that you just took in. It'll be okay. We'll, we'll get through it together. <laughs> um, I always like to just put a little bit about me to start with. Um, so just so you know a little bit about me, my name is Sharon. I run an IT consulting slash Microsoft partner called Smarter Consulting. Um, we do pretty much anything Microsoft related and a little bit of non-Microsoft stuff. Um, I kind of consider us more of a connector network than necessarily a services solution company. So um, I try to come in and help people solve their technology problems, whether that's me, whether it's somebody else. Um, I try to help them do whatever they need done. Um, I have been doing this a long time. I've been in IT for over 25 years. I've collected a few credentials along the way, um, just because why not? You know, I don't have anything better to do. Um, and so I currently do have a Six Sigma black belt. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. I am a certified business and systems analyst. I'm Teams admin certified. And um, I'm also a Microsoft regional director. So I get to play in that space a lot. Um, if you guys have any questions, you want to follow up with me, you need anything, you want to follow me, there's all my information on the bottom. My husband even made me this handy dandy QR code. So all you have to do is hold your phone up and it will make a contact us form that you can then just say, hey Sharon, I want to talk to you and I'll schedule time with you. All right, I'm saying this up front um, just to remind you guys because sometimes I get busy with questions at the end and I forget. Um, so please, please, please complete your evaluations for me and for everybody else. Uh, helps us know what we're doing right, what we can improve on. If there's anything you'd like, make sure you put your notes in there so we can make these better. I've been speaking for a very long time. Um, I mean, I've been speaking for probably 20 years. Um, I've been on the Microsoft circuit for about 12. And I really do read my feedback and I really do tweak my sessions based on the feedback. So um, if you can provide that, that's really helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our sponsors. Guess what? We get to be here because we have sponsors. If you haven't visited the expo hall, make sure to walk through. Um, go over there, say thank you. Uh, get to know about a little bit about the sponsors, find out what they do, maybe pick up some swag. Yay, swag. Um, also, uh, you know, when you leave here, a lot of times conferences are great, but you go to one, maybe two a year. Right? Um, but then there's that, well, what do I do the rest of the time? So there's tons and tons and tons of community events that happen, specifically user groups, um, things like local user groups. So teamsug.com uh, gives you information in your particular area. I run the Kansas City M365 user group. Um, it is completely virtual at this point. I don't know that we're even going to go back to being in person. Um, and if you just go to kcm365.org, you'll find out more information about us. You can register for the monthly meetings. Um, every month we do a different topic in Microsoft applications. So we literally span the gamut of 0365, Power Platform, Teams, whole nine yards. Uh, feel free to join us whenever you want. Okay, now for the meat and potatoes. This is the important stuff. So. There is this really cool application in Microsoft Teams called Shifts. Who knew there was a really cool application in Teams called Microsoft Shifts? So the neat thing is, is I was just talking to somebody at lunch and said, hey, there's this cool thing called Microsoft Shifts. He's like, what? I didn't even know that existed. I didn't even know that was a function. Yeah, yeah, it is. So I had talked to so many people. I'd done some pilots with it and really enjoyed it. And people had said they didn't know what it was, so I'm like, Oh, well, why don't we do a presentation on it? So here it is. Um, it used to be known as a really nice little mobile app called Staff Hub. So if in the past you'd ever used a, an app called Staff Hub, um, they basically took Staff Hub, they thought it was really nice, they gutted it, and said this would be fantastic in Teams. And they just kind of <laughs> plugged it in. As far as Staff Hub goes, for the, what, four or five people that use Staff Hub, um, every once in a while I run into somebody who's like, we did use Staff Hub and we had so much stuff and now we can't have it anymore. Guess what? Yes, you can. You can migrate your stuff from Staff Hub to Shifts and Teams. And here's the links that I put in my deck so that if you ever want to be able to do it, there's the information and the PowerShell to it to do it. So you can <laughs> migrate it if you did use Staff Hub before. So for the first little part of my presentation, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes-ish, um, I'm going to walk you through what Shifts is, what it isn't, provides those pieces of information you want to know. 
Um, and then what will happen is after that, I'll then show you a demo and then I can do some Q&A and kind of do a little bit of a guided tour through it. So Microsoft Shifts was really designed to keep first line workers connected and in sync. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of a vague statement. Thanks Microsoft, super helpful. Um, the idea was really that there needs to be a place that if I have first line workers, front line workers that are keeping track of their schedule outside, because most people are salary and we're not keeping track of their schedule, right? Um, but then we've got these kind of people who are on the front line, maybe a customer service call center, maybe a tech support call center, and we want to keep track of who's doing what and when, right? Doesn't even have to be just their actual shift, but what are they doing? When are they doing it? Um, and so Microsoft thought it was really valuable to add this tool to Teams so that internally, as part of the value of already buying this license, you can actually keep track of who's doing what and when. Outside of Outlook, <laughs> which group calendars are great for that, don't get me wrong, but this is a little different. Um, so what you can do is managers can create, update, and manage, shift schedule, so it, you, it allows you to do scheduling um, for one or more teams. These are correlated one-to-one -one with a Microsoft team that already exists. So you have your Microsoft team, you're doing all the things, you're collaborating, you listen to Joy's session and you learned what to do with Teams, but then you have this group that you gotta keep track of shifts for. And you're like, well, where do I put that? Because we've already got all the collaboration going on. I don't wanna go to another piece of software. You don't have to. It's already collaborated. The shift schedule is already one for one with the team that you have existing. That said, you can only have <laughs> one shift schedule. Now I'll show you, you can divide it up and get a little bit more out of it. But you can only have one shift schedule per team, one for one. So for every team, you can have one shift schedule. They can only be originally created by the team owner. Once they're created, no big deal. But like if you've got a group where maybe um, you have a service account that owns the team and it's only members on the team, no member can create the original schedule, but once it's been created, then you can use the schedule. Uh, if you have owners in the team, then the own, anybody that's listed as an owner can go in there and create the shift schedule if it's not already created. Once it's been created, it's just there forever in perpetuity. You're just kind of stuck with it, all right? Um, the other thing with shifts, much like Teams, is that it was built mobile first. What I find, and this is, you know, talk about people using their phones, right? What I find is for the workers, the mobile app tends to work a lot better for them to get on and see what their shifts are, maybe trade shift, maybe see what shifts are available um, to interact with the tool because on the mobile device, you see your own shifts, right? You're looking at what shift am I working, what shifts are available for me, so it's very me focused. Whereas for managers, I find that it's easier to do the PC app or the web app um, in, in Teams in the browser or in the client app um, because you see the shift schedule more of like in a calendar form. So it's a little bit easier to manage for managers. In addition, all those special tools for reporting and configuration, administration, all those types of things um, are a lot easier to use in the actual application that is not on the mobile device. So those are just kind of my tips of the day from what I have found. There's also a few more things to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, shifts, it's getting there, <laughs> slowly but surely, every once in a while I get in there and one of these things is fixed, so please feel free to let me know. Um, the last time I did this was in September and somebody's like, oh, I think I have this, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> so Shifts is available in all, 365, all Office 365 subscriptions. The only two, it is not in Teams, and as far, or Teams Free and as far as I know, it will never be in Teams Free, all right? We'll just leave that there. Um, the, GCC Cloud, um, it is, as far as I know, it's not there now unless somebody can prove me wrong. Um, I don't know what the timeline is on it and I don't have a dev tenant for GCC, so I can't tell you. Um, but when it gets there, it'll get there. And I'm sure there will be an announcement. <laughs> but as of now, those are the only places you can't get it. So basically, if you own Teams in any other way, you have shifts. Doesn't matter your license, as long as you can get to Teams, all right? Um, so a few things you need to know. This is one of the biggest things that I kind of found very interesting. So inside of our shifts, we have time blocks. So if you think about a block of time on your calendar, on your shift, that could be a eight to five shift, it could be an eight to nine shift, whatever it is, it's considered a time block by the shifts app. All time blocks are equal. Time blocks are time blocks are time blocks, doesn't matter what you put on them. So first of all, um, you can see each other's time. <laughs> so let's say for example, um, 
I have a shift and I'm going to be working eight to five on Monday. And Joy has a shift. Well, wait, she's decided to take Monday off. So she's entered a shift that is technically PTO, which is a time off block. Well, she's put her notes in there and I put my notes in there. And Joy, I say to Joy, I look on the calendar and you can shift, like you can request to swap shifts. And I'm like, well, I'd rather have the day off than do my work. I can request Joy's time off block for my work block <laughs> because all time blocks are equal. Um, in addition, um, let's say, for example, um, I'm going to be having a delicate procedure done and I put the notes in there. Everybody can see it because all blocks are equal. So just be cautious. Um, about <laughs> what, what is in there and think of them more as a calendar that just has generic blocks and they're defined as either work or time off and then there's notes. But everybody can see everything because in Teams we're collaborating so there's not a lot of permissioning around this. All right. Um, there are a few things you can't quite do yet. There's a few workarounds for those. Um, you cannot schedule a reoccurring shift. So, you know, when you go on, everybody asks this, okay, if I'm on Outlook and I schedule a recurring meeting, can I do that in shifts? No, you cannot. You can copy and paste. So you can copy and paste a day, a week, a month. So it's kind of the same, but you can't say, I want to schedule a shift for every Monday at certain times. You cannot do that. You are manually putting each block in, and then if you have a schedule, you can copy that schedule month to month to month to month to month, perfectly fine, but no reoccurring. Um, as far as I know, Lori sitting in the back, so maybe I, I always said prove me wrong. Maybe Laura will prove me wrong. Um, you cannot add guest users into shifts. <laughs> so you have to be um, inside of the tenant to be able to access shifts as part of Teams. All right. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about a little bit that I found a few kind of gotchas is the first line worker policy, which I don't think exists anymore. I think they changed it to where you can only just do whatever policy you want. I know it was getting phased out. Um, but when you do a policy, whether you're setting up the first line, policy, first line worker policy or you're setting up just a custom policy, before you apply it to Teams, um, test it first. Use it yourself first. Um, I tried to do this and I was like, this is super cool. I'm going to turn it on and we're going to try this out. And then I couldn't switch it back for a while. <laughs> it took a little while for it to propagate. And I'm like, oh. So um, the other thing is it hides all the buttons. Like in certain policies, you can hide all the buttons on your team's navigation. So the way this was designed was that basically shift workers would only have access to shifts and nothing else. So if you make a policy like that, uh, use it yourself. See if you're actually only wanting the buttons you put in that policy. If you're like, oh, no, they really do need access to these other buttons. Um, because otherwise, what will happen is you'll push that out and then everybody's going to scream because they're going to be like, oh, no, you took my button away. Um, so make sure you test it out. And again, um, it takes a little while for it to change back and forth. Uh, when I did it, it was a few hours. We're not talking about like five minutes. Like, it was a few hours before it gave me my team's buttons back after I tested it. Um, so make sure you're testing that before you push it out to the entire organization that you're going to be using it for. All right, um, how do I find shifts? So I put this in the deck because a lot of people kept asking me, I don't remember where you said to go. Um, so in Teams, and I'll show you this when we do the demo, you know how you click on the little dot, 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 and then the apps all come out. Um, so shifts should be in there because it's kind of a core element to Teams. If for whatever reason you don't see it, type shifts in the app, it'll pop up, should be there. It's got a little clock, so you'll know what it is. Um, on your mobile device, um, when you're in there, it's under the more. So when you click on that more, um, it'll be able to pop up. Or if you drag the little um, drawer open, if it's already been turned on, then you should be able to see it in there as well. All right, before I move on to the demo, and lots of fun to play around with shifts, um, I always like to tell people this is like an unsung hero, and I don't think a lot of people really even know about it. Um, but if you go to support.office.com forward slash training, there's free Microsoft training with videos on every single application for Office 365, including Teams. Bite-sized nuggets. Also, you know those old infographics we used to pay all this money for? You know, like the ex tips in Excel and all those kind of things? They're in there for free, too. You can download them, print them off, laminate them, have a good time. Um, but support.office.com support forward slash training 
will take you to this whole area and you can click on any of those applications and get little bite-sized training nuggets um, for all the different Office 365 applications. Okay, let's play in shifts for a little while. I just like to give you the provisos before we get in there. Sometimes I do it too good then, and then people don't have as many questions. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bigger because the way this is displayed is kind of small. Is that okay? Can you guys see that? Is that big enough? Okay. So remember I said, um, I've got mine set up over here. If you don't see it right away, if you click on your little dot, dot, dot right here, um, it should be right here. And if not, if you just type in shifts, it will pop up if you don't already have it set up. And then what will happen is you can see it right here. Another trick that a lot of people don't know about that's like one of my favorite tricks in Teams is once you have selected something to come over here, if you hover over the icon on the left bar and right click, if you guys haven't used the pin feature in Teams, like one of my favorite features, um, right click on it, you can pin and unpin these little apps and that'll stick them to the left nav and then you don't have to go search for them every time. So if you've got a couple that are your favorite, like I really like Tasks by Planner and To Do, I use it a lot. Shifts, I do a lot of demos on. Um, if you have certain things, you can actually pin them right there. So then it's easy to find. All right, so to get to shifts, once you've selected it, what'll happen is when you click on it, it actually opens a little application that's inside of Teams. So you can see right here, look, it's got its own little menu. I can see what's on my board. I've got options up here. There's a few things going on. So remember I mentioned that there is one shift schedule per team. If you have created the shift schedule to go with the team, then it will show right here. Anything that you have the um, permission to see. So if you're a part of that team, you should be able to see the shift schedule. If there is not a shift schedule here, either it has not been created or you do not have access to see it. Those are the two options. I don't know which one but either it hasn't been created or you don't know which to see it. But what you can do if you are an owner is go down here to new schedule and it will show you all of the teams that you have access to, that you're an owner of, that you are able to make a shift schedule for. And so you can see them right there. And if you wanna say, oh, I feel like finance needs a shift schedule, you can click the create button. You can decide which time zone you want it to be in. based on where your shift team is that you're gonna manage, and it will create that shift schedule for you. And it starts basically with nothing, so you end up with one shift schedule, one group, who, who you in the group, and then this open shift spark. That's it, you start with that, and then you can build from there. So you can, cr you can name groups, so I can change the name of this group to anything I want, I can, once I've made them, I can reorder groups or I can get rid of groups. I can add additional groups up here at the top. See how that just made another group? So let's say, we're gonna call this very creatively, group one. Oops. And this is going to very creatively be group two. All right. I can be in one or multiple groups. The only limitation is that whoever you add to the group also must be in the team that's associated with this particular shift schedule. So don't go and try to add people that are external to the organization or that are not in that team. They won't show up. When I go to do this, if I say I wanna add people, so then once I've created these groups, you can create as many groups as you want. You can order them by maybe you have day shift and night shift. Maybe you want to have schedules. So, you know, uh, I wanna do the eight to 12 shift and I wanna do the 12 to three shift. I wanna do the three to five shift. You could have um, team A, team B, team blue, team red, however it is that you organize things, you can put them in groups. Um, and then when you go to add people, what will happen is it's going to show you these are the people that are in your team that are eligible to be added to this shift schedule and this shift group. So there's no guesswork. If your person isn't there, then you're going to need to add them to the team. Now, <laughs> just keep in mind, 
Yes, it adds them to the shift schedule. It also adds them to the team and everything that that comes with. So they will get access to anything that's in that specific team. So just keep that in mind, for good and for bad. All right, I love this note. If the person has been added to the team, please be patient. We actually wrote, I wrote some like custom help for some of my clients and we actually put, please wait at least, you know, however long, like one hour or two hours or 24 hours before trying again. Um, in this case, I find like if you walk away and go to lunch and come back, a lot of times it's added, but for the most part, I'd say 24 hours is a safe bet, right? Because remember, sometimes it takes a few minutes for people to show up in teams, just depending on how busy um, everything is propagating and depending on how complex your team's organization is. So it is gonna show you who's in your team right now. If you need to add your team right here, it's got a link that takes you out to manage your team. And let's say, for example, I'm gonna add Lee because I want him to be able, he's in my team, he's already a member, and now he's in my group in here as well. But notice that he's in group one, but not in group two, okay? So he will participate in group one schedule, but he will not participate in group two schedule. And each of these schedule can have their own open shifts that I can qualify and make available. So if I was to add an open shift to group two, Lee would not get a notification. He would not see it in his mobile app that there are open shifts available because he's not part of that group. So it's subdividing the team from a shifts perspective, everybody in the team, and then now I'm grouping these people individually and giving them access to what's in shifts. All right. I'm going to go to one that I've got a little more in. Uh, let's see. I had a whole bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, I'm missing the wrong one. There it is. Okay, so. Um, so for example, I've added a bunch of shifts in here. So you can see Here's the open shifts that are available. So for example, in this situation, um, we have an HR support team. Um, we've got our on-call group that works the morning hours. We've got an on-call group that works the evening hours. We've got a specific after hours team. We've got an overnight team. Maybe we've got another shift for, you know, maybe weekends, holidays, um, fill-ins, whatever you want to talk about. Um, and so these people, um, these groups are divided up that way. You can put these open shifts in here. And remember I said you can't do recurring shifts. So if I wanna go add a shift in here, I can hover over this. All I have to do is click the little dot, dot, dot. I can add an open shift. It will automatically give me the last thing that I did for this shift because it assumes if I've done it before in this, it's gonna to want to do the same thing. I can tell it how many open slots are available. So let's say in the holidays, we're gonna be really busy, we know we're gonna have five slots open or we have five slots that are budgeted to fill. Um, let's go ahead and put five slots in there. Hopefully we'll fill all five slots. This allows people on the team in that shift group to say, I wanna work. You can, you can turn this off if you don't wanna use self um, fulfilled shifts. But in this case, we're letting them say, hey, I need up to five people to do this shift. You guys decide who it is. First five to sign up can have it, right? You don't have to assign those people, which takes the work off the managers. So I can put the shift out there. Um, I can say maybe I have five open slots for that. I can define the time of it. Um, I can decide if it's going to have a break that's built into this particular shift, right? I can put descriptions or notes about something specific about that shift, um, and I can add specific activities that are associated with this shift. All right, so there's all kinds of good information that I can put in here. What happens after I add a shift is I have two options. I can save this, and if you think about this like in publishing, if you think about like publishing a web page or publishing a document, if I save it, what's happening is it's gonna save it, save it, save it, save it, save it, and then ultimately I can share all those changes out to the group at once or out to my team at once, or I can just go ahead and share this right away. So maybe I've got a last minute shift, I need people to know about it, I don't wanna wait, I can go ahead and share it directly um, with my team, the other thing I could do is maybe I wanted to add a shift and notice when I do this, see how it picked the same shift, but it didn't put in the details. The other option is I can simply save it. If I simply save it, there's a little asterisk on the share to team button. That means there are pending shifts that I have created that are available to share that have not been shared yet. 
All right, and then once I have done them all and I'm ready, I can now click the share with my team and it will say, okay, how much do you want to share? Because it's not just one individual shift. And so it's gonna say here, you have one open shift to share. See how there's a little asterisk, I know it's tiny. So here's the change. This is what I wanna share out. And then much like an Outlook, you know how when you do the change to the meeting and it says, do you only wanna send this to the person you just added or do you just wanna let the whole team know? This is where you have the choice of maybe there's a specific person, right? That are a specific person that is impacted by that shift, right? They are the only ones that are really gonna care. Or I want everybody to know about this change. So you kind of get this option to say, I can send it to everybody from a notification standpoint, or I can just do it to the people that it affects. All right? Once you share that, it will clear it all out. At the top, see how it says, ah, oh, your shift has been successfully shared. And then now, this is grayed out again. So see how it's just not even lit up? So we know that all of the shifts that we have added or changed have all been taken care of and everybody knows about them. All right, questions so far? Is that creating invite? Absolutely not. Oh, yeah. Here, I'm gonna throw this out and you guys can just pass it around, okay? If anybody has a question, make sure you get the mic, sorry. The question was, this is the number one question asked, guys. <laughs> like, this should win a prize, right? It's the number one question asked. Does this put it on Outlook? No, it does not. It lives inside of Shifts because Shifts is a separate application, okay? Does this sync with Outlook? No, does not sync with Outlook. Can I put it on Outlook? Kind of. <laughs> All right, I can copy the information Outlook, but no, it does not sync with Outlook. Wouldn't that be lovely? All right? Um, so I've got my shifts in here. I can share them out. Any other quick questions before I move on? Okay. Sometimes people have burning questions and they need to ask them. Okay. So a couple other things you can do um, inside of here is we talked a little bit about, you know, what can I do with the shift afterwards? Um, so we've added our group. We've added our shifts. Um, then as people start to ask about it, so let's say, for example, remember I mentioned Joy and I have our own shifts and I want Joy's time off <laughs> instead of having to work my shift. So I'm gonna trade and then she's gonna have to go work and I'm gonna get the day off. That's how this works, right? Um, so what will happen is as people make those requests, they will show up here in the requests tab. You will also get a notification and an email that says, hey, so-and-so requested time. And it says, looks just like this. Somebody would like to sh swap the shift they have with somebody else's shift because I would rather be off than have to work. <laughs> so you as an admin, which is the owner of the team, can approve it or can cancel the request. All right, so you can say yes or no. You can also manually make a new request up here. So if somebody calls you and they have no idea how to use technology, <laughs> they just know, or maybe they don't have the access to do it, right? So there's configuration settings for this. Either they don't know how to do it or they can't do it. And they call and they go, hey, I can't work tomorrow. Can I shift to Thursday? Can I change this to Thursday? Absolutely, right? Um, so you can put that offer in for them. Um, I wanna swap this shift, maybe, you know, find another person shift, which I don't think I have anything on here, um, for something else and then put a note, and then what will happen is once you send that request, it'll show up in here as a request. I have a question. Yeah? Uh, does the person that you're asking to switch with, do they get notified? Yes. Okay. Yep, they'll get notified that somebody has requested their shift. But it's up to the owner of the group to To approve it, to approve, it. decline, or cancel. Okay. Yep. All right, the other thing you can do is, if Joy wants to be nice to me, she could offer her day off to me <laughs> in, in turn for me to, you know, for my working day. And she could say, I would like to offer this shift that I have up to this person. Oops. Clicked on the wrong button. And then add a note of why. Um, this works really well in organizations where people are fairly autonomous and you've got a lot of frontline people who are just like, dude, we'll work it out, right? I mean, how many times does somebody, especially at a temp level, say, oh yeah, I talked to so-and-so and I'm going to work Monday and they're going to work Thursday and you're like, as long as it's covered, we're all happy, right? Um, and so if we give them the autonomy to do that, 
then they can swap with other people autonomously. Um, and then all you have to do is basically sign off and say yes. Um, or they can offer shifts to other people. Same process. Somebody still has to sign off at an admin level. But that way, they can manage all that themselves. And you're not on the phone with people trying to figure out who's working when, because you really don't care. All right, so we can do that. Um, the other tab that's up here that's kind of hidden is the settings tab, and this is your backend configuration settings. You can see there's not a ton of stuff. This is not like a super fancy admin center that has a lot of options. It's just really basic, simple stuff. Um, remember when we set up the team, I picked the, ti the time zone? Well, maybe I did that wrong, or maybe I have a team that's in a different time zone, and I'd like to change that in comparison to a different team. I can change the team time zone right here. Just remember, here's another gotcha. Remember, stuff in the team goes back to the team, not just shifts because it's all connected. So notice how it says team time zone, not shifts time zone or channel time zone. So just remember that that's there. The nice thing about this too is you can define what your work week looks like. So if you have a work week that starts on a Monday or Tuesday, um, my kids have worked shift jobs a lot and a lot of times it starts on a different day than what we do in the corporate world. Um, so you can pick what your, what your shift schedule wants to look like. When you do that, I'll show you. So this is Sunday, let's shift this to a Tuesday start. And then let's go back. And then let's change this to week. And see up here how that shit, I had to shift back so that I could refresh it. So see how now this starts on Tuesday at the beginning of the calendar? It's really that easy. So like I'm going to switch this back to Sunday. And then let me, I just kind of refresh it like this. And it should, it's being slow. It'll go back in a minute. Come on. I'm also doing this in the browser. Eh, I'll give it a second. Oh, no, it didn't even stick. All right, there it goes. Now let's try it again. Did it shift back? It's only because I'm doing a demo of it. There it goes. <laughs> so I switched it, I refreshed the screen, um, and now the view starts back in Sunday. So that's what that does. Um, so copying shifts. So remember we talked about there's things you can add into those shifts. So when you first click on, I want to add a new shift, it's going to remember what the last time of the shift was, but none of the other details. Um, when you copy the shifts, um, and I'll show you how you do that in a second, um, instead of reoccurring, you can copy. When you copy them, you can determine whether or not you want to keep the activities with it or not. Because sometimes the activities are specific to like a certain day or a certain week. You want to keep everything else but not the activities. Or maybe you do want to keep the activities. So it's just a decision point of whether or not when you copy the shifts it keeps the activities or not. Remember I told you you have the option to allow people to view and request open shifts. Um, or you could hide that. That's that line at the top that says open shifts. Basically if you toggle that off, you can't put open shifts out there and people can't request open shifts. It's just you're defining what they work and when. All right, so you can turn that on and off. Um, down here, so we, didn't, we haven't looked at time off quite yet. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but when people make time off requests, you can determine what, the, what type of time off request it is. Um, this doesn't really do anything magical behind the scenes. It just gives them things to, to see in the drop down and the little icon to go with it. You can get rid of the out of the box ones by just clicking the little trash can. And you can add your own by clicking this custom option and saying, I want custom time off. And then maybe I want to pick my own cute little icon. Let's see, I like boats, so we're going to say boats, <laughs> right? Um, this is my custom time off to go on a boat. And now I'll show you what happens when we go back and we do the time off options. Um, you'll see what that looks like. But you can manage these right here. I did mention that there's a time clock option to somebody who was asking me earlier. Um, so time clock comes with a mobile clock in and out. Exportable time reports and optional location detection. This is kind of a cool feature that a lot of people don't even realize is in here. So if you have hourly workers that are you're using these shifts, you can also have them clock in and out using shifts. There's actually a clock in and out option. Um, it's not as advanced and fancy as things like maybe what T-Sheets, which is now QuickBooks Time, or some of the more advanced type software. 
But at a rudimentary level, if all you're really doing is wanting them to punch in and punch out and you don't want to pay a bunch of money for another application, it works great. All right, it just keeps track of when they got there and when they left. So you can set this up. Um, when you turn it on, it will then say turn clock, the time clock is turned on. You can turn it off again. It's just a toggle on and off whether or not they have access to it. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat is you can include location detection. Once you've included location detection, this is actually like of all the technology and shifts, this is one of the most advanced in my opinion. Um, you can set it so that they can only clock in or out within an area, within a geolocational area. So for example, I have known people in my past to log into hourly jobs um, as they're driving into work <laughs> on their phone. And then they come in and they park and stop and smoke and go to the bathroom and see their friends. And eventually they make it to their desk 30 minutes later, right? So if we can put a geolocational ring around that and say, okay, we don't want them clocking in until they're at least in the parking lot, <laughs> right? We don't want them to be able to clock in before they leave their house. Um, so what this does is it puts a geolocational ring about when that button becomes available for them. So if you say, you know, here's the address um, that they have to be near before they can clock in, it keeps us from having some fraudulent logging in and logging out. All right. Um, so for the only caveat for this is you'll notice that shifts will prompt your users for GPS access because obviously if they're doing on a mobile device, it has to have GPS access to make this work. So this is a lot easier if it's a work phone or a work device that you can manage and say, yes, we are just gonna turn this on for everybody. Um, if it's personal devices, it gets a little sketchier and then you have to kind of look at what your policies are for your organization. I do think it's cool though. I think it's a neat feature. All right, um, once you've enabled this and people are using it, to do the time clock reporting, not the shifts reporting, I'll show you that in a second, to do the time clock reporting, um, there's an export button here. And, okay, I got 22%. I might have to plug my computer here in a second. Actually, I'm gonna plug it in just to be safe so that we don't die in like 10 minutes. I had a full battery, but let's do this just to be safe. All right, think about, do you have any questions while I'm plugging this in? Yes. You got the mic? Somebody throw him the mic. The, uh, the time tracking? Yes. Is that really only a viable solution if people are working in the office? Because if people are working from home, do you, it would be their home address? Are you saying, oh, for the geolocational yeah, fencing? Yeah, the geolocational part. The geolocational fencing really is designed for an on-site. Okay. Yeah, um, good question. Um, I mean, they absolutely can clock in and clock out from home on a mobile device, but the geolocational fencing would primarily really be designed for getting to a work location and saying you can't log in until then. Could you have more than one location or is it only one? As far as I know, it's only one. Okay, so if there's two offices, it wouldn't work either. It's only I, That would get a little bit more into when you go to the Teams Admin Center and you're setting up locations and all of that kind of stuff, but I don't know that that comes back into here unless you do something really fancy. Definitely okay. not out of the box. All right, thanks. All right. Okay, I see it plugged in. Good. We're not going to die. Okay. So if you're using the, the time tracking, then down here is where you would then click this export button. You want time tracking for a certain time period. I'm going to go back a while. Just I don't remember if I got anything in here or not. Nope. Okay. Oops. I went the wrong direction. Fine. I don't think I have anything in here that new because I haven't added anything. Up to 45 days. Am I getting past 45 days? Fine. All right, I'll show you what this looks like. It shows up down here in an Excel report. I don't think there's gonna be anything in here though. So, so there's nothing in here because I don't have anything running, but you can see what the report looks like. I do like the reports that come out of shifts. They're, they're really well kind of organized. So you can see all the information in here. So like I said, if you just want a rudimentary keeping track of people clocking in and out, um, it does keep track of if something's been administratively managed, 
when it was, who it was, what their clock was, what their scheduled shift time was, um, depending on how you've got it set up, if there's like paid breaks or unpaid breaks, um, things like that. So you see all this stuff kind of comes out of all those things I've shown you. It shows you this by totals, had there been anything in here, and then it'll show you total for the range that you selected. So it's a nice, it's a nice little reporting tool that pulls all that information out. Like I said, simple, super basic. Hey, but it's included in your license costs, so it's kind of nice. All right, so let's go back over to our schedule. And so we get into these things. Remember we talked about um, time off? So I could say I want to add a time off request. All right, so let's say, for example, I want to add a time off. So notice when I click it down for me. So if I go up here as an admin, I'm adding an open shift. But when I go down to me as a person, whether I personally am doing it or whether my manager is doing it for me, when you go to a person, I have the option to add a shift for this person or add time off for this person. So those are two different things. And see, there's that drop down <laughs> of the little pictures. And there's my custom time off that I added. Right? Pretty easy, pretty simple. It's used for reporting, so it's nice. Um, but nothing fancy. Um, I can define the date. I can define if it's simply like I only want to be off for an hour that day or if I want the whole day off. And I can add notes. Once again, this is Teams. It's collaborative. Everybody can see everything. I highly recommend that you not use this as an HR tool. <laughs> not the right place to put people's personal details. You will get in trouble really fast. What this is designed for is simply to keep track of a schedule. You're welcome to put notes in here of why, as long as you understand that if you put that information in there, everybody can see it. So I always tell people, especially when I'm setting them up with this, um, just be cautious of what goes in there. Inevitably, people learn their lesson early because um, <laughs> somebody will post something dumb, somebody else will see it, and they'll be like, Bob, you're going to be out for, and he's like, mm, hang on, let me go delete that. I'm never doing that again, right? So I always try to train people to know better, but inevitably, somebody learns the lesson. So just keep that in mind. Um, I can also pick colors, right, to make it super cool. And then once I'm done, um, same thing, I can save it or I can share it with the team. And then, but see how it just goes, oh, whoops, I should have, I didn't save it. Let me go back. I'm going to say, I need, I'm going to go on a boat. Gonna be on a boat. <laughs> All right. Notice because I didn't share it, I got my little asterisk. So let's go ahead and share that with the team. I didn't pick a color, so I got that default gray. But see how it just sits on here? It's just another block on the calendar, on the shift, on the schedule, right? So it's right there. OK, so once you put all this information on here, um, keep track of it. Maybe have details in here for you know what's happening, what's going on in all of these shifts. Um, I did tell you you can copy and paste. So I'm going to go back to the schedule. So the way to remember this, I'll go back out of there. The way to remember this is kind of think of this like Excel. See how it's a grid format? I'm not going to say anything you can do Excel and you can do in here, but kind of think of it for copy and paste purposes. Think of it like that. So um, I can pick one thing and see how it puts a little line around the block. I can click my shift key or my control key, sorry. No, it's shift, control. Control key, one of these. It's supposed to normally select multiples. Hang on. Well, if I drag, I know it'll work. <laughs> it was doing it for shifts or for the shift key. But if you drag, so see how I did that? I can select multiple things like this. So let's say, for example, whoops, I want to select this whole week. And then I'm going to do my control C on my keyboard. And then they go to the next week. Oh, I didn't grab it. Hang on. I'm going to grab it. We're going to copy it. Why is it not copying it? There we go. And then we're going to go to the next week. And then we're going to paste. 
So I can do that for a week, for a month, for the whole shift schedule, like as much as you really want to do. And let's say I want to see more. Well, I can switch to a month view and then I could copy this whole thing. Right? And I could do more and more and more and more and more. Or I could pick the whole selection. So, I mean, it's an okay workaround. It does, it does the job so that you don't actually have to manually put every single one in all the time. It does all right. All right, so we put those things in, got those there. Um, and then when all of it's done, um, we have a couple of views up here at the top right. Let's share our new stuff out just so it is happy with me. So up here at the top right, there's a few more buttons that we need to talk about. Talked about the ad group. I've kind of shown you this a few times. This is just the view. I want to see it by day, by week, by month. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, I can print the schedule. I can scale it to one page. I can go to help, right? So this is just if I want to print the schedule itself. I do like this feature. Um, I can change the way that I look at it. Right now, see how my view is in groups, sim similar to views and teams. Right now, I'm seeing this by groups, but maybe I don't want to. Maybe I just want to see all active shifts. Maybe I only want to see time off across the board. Maybe I want to see if there's a conflict with anybody. Maybe I only want to narrow this down to a specific group to work with their shifts, right? So it's kind of nice, um, or maybe I only want to see um, a specific person's shifts. So we can kind of start seeing how we can determine um, how I want to see this and what I want to see. And now I can put those all back on the board. So it's kind of nice. Gives me some options. All right, quick access views. These are kind of the fastest things people want to go look at. All right, so those are the things that we have up there. And then, because we need more buttons that are hidden, there's also a little dot, dot, dot in the corner. <laughs> if I click on the dot, 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 there's a few more options that I have. I can do undo, redo. I can view a schedule. So this is the current shared schedule and what everybody can see so far. That's when the little asterisk, remember, we haven't shared it with everybody. I can recall the last shared schedule, so maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> I pushed things out incorrectly. I, uh, maybe not. I can refresh the screen, but I mean, sometimes this takes longer to get to than it's worth, so I just hit F5 or hit my refresh. The one that I do like right here is this export schedule button. So. Much like the clock in, clock out, the time one that I showed you before, this is really nice. So let's see if it'll let me go back and do, I'm gonna do 30 days. All right, I'm gonna export this out. Yes, thank you very much for protecting me. And this does a really nice job. So what it does is it shows you um, for every position, or for every person, here's each person who had a shift during this time period, what group they're on, see how it calls it position, that's the groups that we have in that schedule, the total number of paid hours that were calculated because of this, and then each day individually, what was on that particular shift for that day. And then there's also this totals tab that totals the hours by day. I think that's nice. I mean, for a built-in tool, it's not too shabby. Look, I didn't have to do all that myself. So once I've put it in there, it does give me the option then to kick that out. The other place that I can see this is if you look up here, it's kind of faint. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I'm going to zoom in one more time because I know it's kind of, but see how it says zero hours, 18 hours. So it actually calculates it right here. And then it also gives you the total number of shifts and the total number of hours for that person for this view. So if I change this view, so I have nine hours and there's seven open shifts. If I change this view to the month, now there's 12 shifts. So depending on what view you're in, it goes ahead and it calculates the shifts, the hours um, by person. And then in this case, the day is right up here on the top left. If I go to week, then it shows it by week over here on the left and then by day at the top of the days. And then for month, 
the total month. And then you can see the zeros up here where it's calculated. And then that one's 18. So it does do a nice job. So the thing that I see most people using this for is where they're trying to keep track, especially of hourly or temporary or part-time workers. And they're just like, okay, I have X amount of hours that need to be filled for this week for this specific thing. And then I want to calculate them all so that I'm filling what I'm supposed to be filling across the board. But I don't want to have to add all that in my head. A lot of people do this in Excel. This basically does it for you. And it just looks kind of nice and gives you some, some options with it. You can do a few manual things here. You can copy the schedule. Again, it's just another copy button. All right, so I know we're down to like five or six minutes. I think I've shown you the bulk of it, but what other questions do you guys have? I have a question. Yeah. Um, can, can you do multiple clock in and outs during a shift then for time reporting? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's say, for example, somebody has an 8 to 5 shift even, but they clock in at 8.03, they clock out for a break, they clock back in for lunch, they clock back out. Yep, absolutely. Okay. The shift is more for the organizing aspect and the time in time out that's why that time in time out schedule is a different plate or the yeah. report is a different place because they're actually managed separately i think that would be useful the other thing is what does it look like for the owner uh, notification wise so somebody i have an open shift and somebody apply you know puts themselves in for that shift am i notified through the app let's see if or? i got one okay um i had some in here at one point Yeah, you do get a pop-up in the app. Um, so there's an alert that's in the app, but you also get an email. Oh. I just haven't done this in a while, so. You get an email that basically says so-and-so wants to swap a shift with you. Um, but I don't remember where they're at. Nope. I'll look for one and show you later. What is the, I, the question was more about the owner. Um, so if, if I'm an owner and I create a shift with open shifts and somebody wants it, is it the same thing? I'm the owner and I get an email saying someone's like took an hour, yep. whatever it is. Yep. Yeah, so, so it's kind of, you have to think of it as the members are participating as a team, right? So everybody's, Everybody is part of the team. Everybody is part of the shift schedule. Everybody essentially gets the same notifications. They participate the same. The only difference is that owners have the ability to approve changes, um, add shifts, um, make changes to the settings. And so for the most part, 99% of it is all identical across the board. Um, there's just a few things that happen at an owner level that don't happen at a member level. That makes sense. Yeah. And that, it's just a matter of playing around with it and going in there and seeing, you know. For the most part, what you can do is the configuration stuff on the back, back end, adding shifts and then approving shifts. What other questions? Oh, I think we're at time. Yes? Uh, is there an Azure AD registration? No, the question is, is there an Azure AD for, you mean like an Azure app registration? There is not. It's built into Teams by default out of the box, so you do not have to click the, you don't have to get your admin people to approve anything. Um, it's just already there. <laughs> so the question is, does it tie into a payroll system? As far as I know, no. Um, I've had several conversations about automating things. Um, I'm sure, based on the app fabric and Teams framework and options around that, I mean, I'm guessing that a good developer could probably come up with something, but out of the box, there is no integrations with shifts that I'm aware of. All right, I know we're at time. Um, you guys are welcome to answer questions. I don't want to keep you too long, but if you have any more questions, um, can you throw the mic back oh. there so it gets recorded? Yay. Yeah, does this tie into the uh, Power Platform for automating getting data out of it? Not out of the box, not easily. Okay. I mean, you can do anything with enough code, right? Right. So if you guys want, um, I do have cards and a little bit of swag that I brought in. My husband told me to bring it, so it's back there um, on the back table. So if you want a card, if you have questions, or if you just want to grab some swag, um, feel free to stop by and get it. Otherwise, I will be around till tomorrow. So um, if you have questions, just hunt me down. Thank you. Thank you.